Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to look further at the Raspberry Pi. And what we're going to look at here is I want to do some screen recording and looking at what will probably end up being my long term build for my new workstation. So we are running MX Linux. Now, there are a couple more I want to test before I decide for sure if this is it. But I do want to walk through uh, how well this is going to work, and I want to walk through the customizations and the layout that I have for this particular build. So this is, of course, MX Linux, and I do reconfigure the panel to be the bottom because I'm not a fan of the panel on the side. That's quite easy to do. I have all of the software installed that I would usually do. So we have uh, our Thunar down here. We have GIMP. We have KeePass XC. We have Bluefish Editor. Evolution, LibreWolf, and Firefox. Now, I'm using mostly the darker themes. However, some applications like Bluefish Editor do not work well under a dark theme. And so I have a custom desktop icon, which is going to force this one into the light theme. We do lose the icons at the top. Now, I could actually force it into a different light theme and still be able to see the icons at the top. But in all honesty, I don't usually use them. I might just remove the toolbar altogether. And this works perfectly fine. Of course, I have a video about how to do that very briefly if you go into your uh, .local folder and then share applications. You can see that we have some, uh, we have these custom desktop files. And so if I open these guys up with Featherpad, effectively all we are going to do is we have to change the uh, execute branch. We have to put this inside of a wrapper for a different theme. And so that's what we did is we uh, we just changed the theme for for those. And I did that for evolution as well. Evolution does work fine under a dark theme, but I prefer my evolution being a light theme personally. Of course, we are not doing a capture card. I'm recording this directly on the Raspberry Pi with Simple Screen Recorder. So that is how good this is working. I can play YouTube videos without a huge deal. I don't know if I will be able to on... Uh, while doing screen recording because it, as long as you're not doing if you're doing full screen 1080p you'll get a little bit of lagginess but for the most part you generally are not going to uh, particularly if you're just watching standard videos over here so we'll just have a look over here we'll head on over to switch to Linux we'll see if it's laggy or not while we're doing a screen recorder so let's just go down to uh, the latest video down here and if we go ahead and play the video, then we'll see that it should work pretty well. At least it does without lagging out a whole lot when I'm not doing a screen recording. Even this is, does not look bad. And I have this at 720p right now. So if we drop that down a little bit, it'll be fine. And take note, I'm also doing screen recording while we're doing this. It is a little bit smoother than this. Um, but that works. Now, here's the caveat to this. I actually installed the dev version of Firefox rather than the version of Firefox that comes on MX Linux. So what the, the reason we did that is Firefox ESR, which is what originally comes on MX Linux, is laggy. It's laggy not just on YouTube. It's laggy everywhere. And I was like, man, this is a bad experience. But I played it with the same things on LibreWolf, and I didn't find that experience. So I went ahead and installed the Mozilla Deb package and followed the basic instructions that we talked about in the past. And I got that installed, and that works fine. Now, I still do have Firefox ESR on here if I want to use it. But I'm, I'm just running both of them simultaneously. Who knows? I might have a need for it. I do use LibreWolf for this system as well because I, I will use Firefox is my primary and I'll use LibreWolf as my browser that breaks out of my firewall because some of my clients do need me to interface with Facebook and things like that. And so I do have LibreWolf set up to do that. And I accomplished that by setting Firefox to use my local DNS and I set LibreWolf to actually use DNS over HTTPS, which is honestly the best application of, of doing that. Uh, so I also installed, I go into my favorites here. I don't think I have my favorites. I guess I kind of do. I have a screenshot tool set up because I oftentimes take screenshots and I also use a color picker. Uh, this is just the color picker application. I like this because whatever my current project is that I'm working on, this is actually the color palette for my 
current project. So if we want to see what something else works within the palette, I just click the button, copy the code, and then update the CSS uh, quite easily. So that's actually a really nice uh, application that I use for doing these. Of course, we have FileZilla with the full LibreOffice suite on here. Now, when I first installed the LibreOffice suite, it did not bring the, the GT, uh, GTK um uh, I forget exactly what the package is, but uh, if you install LibreOffice and it looks like the 1990s is calling and asking for their application back, uh, you need to install the, the GTK uh, packages to interface with it. And once you do that, then they will actually work out uh, really nice. So let me go ahead and find my office. We'll boot up our Libre Writer and you can see what that looks like. So you can also see that this is running really snappy. Uh, this is running right now on an SD card. It's actually running, this is not my permanent SD card. This is just my test card. This is running on a Walmart branded on SD card. So we're not exactly talking about the high height of the barrel, but everything is, is very responsive. I've been doing this on some projects now for about a week. And honestly, it is absolutely amazing. Now, I have it hooked up to a uh, USB voltameter, which I think was interfering. It was causing some random shutdowns here and there. Um, but I think that's because the voltameter itself is preventing some power flow. So I upgraded my cable connecting my my 5-volt, um, 5-amp five USB output device into a much better USB 3.2 cable. And this is actually now showing me we're drawing 1-amp draw at 5 volts. So that's... Um, doing your calculation, that's going to be a little under a half an amp off a 12 volt system since I am, uh, entirely off grid. So that is actually a really, uh, it, it works nice. It really does work nice. So this one here, I've played around with Armbian, which was a little bit laggy. And I played around with, uh, just Raspberry Pi OS starting at headless and installing cinnamon on top. That was also laggy. Now I will say that the Raspberry Pi OS was on a USB drive. And in the past, those, I have not found those to be as snappy as SD cards on my Pi 4. So I, in theory, it should work better. But in practice, I found it really hasn't. So we'll kind of see what that looks like. Now, here is the one factor about this is I don't really want to look at the XFCE desktop every single day for my work. It works and it's good and it's functional. But I actually wanted to see how this works with Cinnamon, which I would prefer to run that if I can. So I went ahead and installed that and we'll go ahead and log in under Cinnamon and I'll show you what that looks like now. And now we are on Cinnamon Desktop. So, of course, I have the same conky up here. This The, the top one is a conky. This is the one I like the best. It's going to show me my uh, root percent CPU usage is at 42%. No swap usage. Uh, temperature is running at 66, which is good. 80 is really where you start seeing some hardware lag. Of course, this is running the active cooler. And then I put the calendar widget down here, which gives me a, a bigger view of the, the date and, and the day of the week and things like that. So with this, we have effectively the same exact setup. Now we are running Cinnamon. I, I'm using the Arc Dark theme. Now, I did notice that sometimes the theme on Cinnamon can cause the issue. I wanted to go with something like amazing and bright and totally cool. So I installed this Eternal Darkness theme. Uh, which gave us some really nice darkness everywhere. And it was uh, it was fine, and I actually I had this one as well. So we had a really neat-looking guy, and then I actually have a, a Debian logo all in bright red. The problem is doing this, this actually does cause some lag, which seems to be related to the desktop uh, layout. So I don't know, uh, maybe that'll be resolved that I have a better power system, and of course that might be too bright for you in a regular uh, basis, who knows. So let's just go ahead and switch it back to how it was. Of course, we're using the dark, uh, arc dark, arc dark theme, and that actually is very snappy. So I prefer that. Again, I still do have down here, Bluefish Editor still works uh, pretty well. This one actually works a little bit better. I think... I'm not sure why, but this one is pulling in better icons. I think it's because the the default icons in Cinnamon are different than that. In fact, I think this version of Cinnamon, which is 5.6.8, is the version that they fixed the icons for light versus dark themes. I think that that's really what's going on. Of course, you can see my nice show desktop down here at the corner, which curiously, I do not see this exact same uh, application on Armbian, uh, although it did work out pretty well. 
Uh, again, I've just been doing a lot of work on this over the last couple of weeks in this layout, and it is really hard to tell that this is a simple little single board computer. Um, even running the simple screen recorder right now, I'm not noticing a lot of um, degradation of performance, and I would. Of course, maybe we'll get back and do start doing the edit on this, and we're like, wow, that sucks, and it's laggy, but I don't know. We'll see. So I did, of course, port over all my Thunderbird data. I put it over on all my evolution data. Here's where I have my color picker. I have my FileZilla over here. And so you can see that uh, everything is actually working really well for me. And uh, I'm frankly, I'm very happy with this. The only other one I'm going to try before deciding if I'm going to go with this is I am going to try out what see what Alpine Linux does. Uh, I haven't run that in production before, and uh, being as that, I believe that's what Post Market OS has done on the Pine phone. That might be an amazing build. All right, now let me tell you one problem I'm having, and maybe you can uh, help me with that. You can see that mouse cursor is blinking like this. Now, I think uh, I've actually seen several different threads about it, and I do believe that the uh, mouse cursor blinking is actually a problem on the Pi 5 uh, hardware. Uh, because a number of people have been talking about it, it's worse in some desktops than others. Uh, you didn't notice it in in uh, the XFCE build, but uh, I did notice it here. I did not also notice it on Armbian either. Uh, but when it comes down to the fact that MX Linux is a way faster than the Armbian build is, and has with it a lot of the fun tools that makes it a lot easier to work with. I decided I'm just going to go with this and I can deal with the, the blinking cursor occasionally. And uh, with the number of people commenting about it, and there are some uh, discussion topics already on the Pi 5 forums, I think this is a hardware issue that might resolve itself down the road. And so with that, um, this, is, uh, this is probably going to end up being the build that I'm using uh, going forward for work. So the, our next step is going to be to install the higher power rated uh, port that converts my power directly from DC into the 5 volt um, line and uh, run that over into the 5 amps. I think that we're going to do that pretty soon and probably switch to this. We're still also waiting for the M2 hat coming with the uh, the new SSD installed for that. And uh, that should hopefully be in the end of this week or the early next week. So we'll get a chance to look at that as well. So that is my overall build. So far, I'm very happy with this. If anybody has any additional tips about that blinking cursor, let me know. Of course, it is not uh, the one thing people have said is display settings, get rid of unknown browser or unknown monitor. That is not the case. I looked at that. I also did try changing around the uh, refresh rates. Uh, I did test that around a little bit, and that did not do anything uh, either. There's one thing that some people are saying if you run X Rand R and set the scaling to 0 0.99999, that might fix it, although some people have said that also causes a serious uh, lag in performance. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but this is possibly my workstation going forward into the future. So thanks, guys, for watching, and we will see you all next time. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.